Good afternoon. Welcome to CS61A on a cheery Wednesday. Um, a first of three midterm exams. My mom always used to complain that we should be called the midterm as if there's more than one of them, because um, it's not the middle of the term. But anyway, it's a week from today. Um, it will start at 7 o'clock, not 7.10. Um, and it will be held in 2050 VLSB. I was not able to get this room for our exams. But at least we, uh, apparently enough of you, just barely enough of you dropped the class already so that we fit in one room <laughs> for the exams, which is nice. Um, question zero, one point, your name, your login, your TA's name, your section number. Um, and you're going to be asked to put your login on each page in case your exam gets separated during grading. Um, the way it works is you take the exam individually, and then near the end, uh, you take part of the exam again as a group. And if you finish the individual exam early, you're going to be sticking around for that. So bring a book to read. Um, but during the exam, uh, it's closed book. This is an experiment this semester. Um, so you're all guinea pigs. Um, you, can keep, you may bring one page of notes. Um, I'm pretty sure that will be plenty. If there's anything obscure that you're supposed to do, we will provide the necessary information in the exam. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, right, that's it for exams. OK, words and sentences. I drew this picture on the board to show you that there's an overlap between words and sentences and lists. Oh, two hands up. Yes, either of you. Go ahead. Can you do both sides of the piece of paper? Yes, you may use both sides of the piece of paper. Yeah. You can have it however you like. If you want to use six-point type, that's fine. Um, by the way, if you want to collaborate ahead of time, on planning a terrific set of notes to bring in with your group members or whoever, that's fine too. Yes? The exam? Um, we're scheduled for two hours. We usually run a little bit over because it takes a little time to actually collect the individual papers and hand out the group part. So, you know, don't plan another activity before 9.30. The individual part will give you like an hour and 40 minutes or something. And then the way I write exams, the goal is to get um, a reasonable one hour exam. And you have two hours. In this case, not quite two hours because of the group part um, to do it in. So I'm hoping that nobody will feel rushed for time in this exam. And to make sure that that's true, uh, we have our TAs take the exams. And the TAs get 12 minutes. If it takes them more than 12 minutes, we cut a question. Um, and it's worth talking about this because it, it, it really, if you think about it, affects how you approach the exam. The reason the TAs can do in 12 minutes something that should take you an hour is not that the TAs can write solutions faster than you can. It's that they're better at reading the questions. They have experience knowing what kinds of questions we ask, what it is we're trying to test, and say, so look at a question and figure out very quickly what it's asking them to do. Therefore, you should plan to spend more time reading than writing during the exam. So, you know, put your hands in your pockets if necessary while you're making sure that you actually understand what the question is asking you to do and then pick up the pencil and start doing it. Um, the actual answering of the questions, supposing that you've been doing the homework all along, um, the answering of the questions should not take you that much time. Okay? Um, I hope that's how it works out. Every once in a while, somebody finds, you know, er, everybody finds some particular question impossible because it was badly worded. We try to catch those things, but we're not perfect at it. So sometimes we do some grade adjustment if necessary. Only up, not down. Um, if everybody gets an A, that's terrific. I'd 
be happy with that. Um, yeah, basically, um, my theory about this, you're going to have opportunities. You're going to be hearing about um, an, an HKN run review session and probably a TA run review session uh, over the weekend. Um, and you can do those things if you want. My own personal feeling about it is that if you don't know the course material by now, it's probably too late you know, to learn it. Um, and that therefore you should just, you know, do the homework regularly, read the homework solutions regularly. So read this week's homework solutions when they're posted on Monday. Um, and Tuesday night, get a lot of sleep. That's it. That's how you study for the exam. Any other questions about the exam? I hate exams. Yes. That's right. M starting Monday is new stuff that will be covered in midterm two. Okay, so it's up through Friday of this week and the homework that you're probably doing this weekend. Okay, although you ought to have started on it already. Um, yeah, any other questions about that? Okay, great. Um, You know what, this just occurred to me, but um, I think we will ask you to turn in your one page of notes. So make a copy so that you'll have them for later because midterm two, you get to bring in two pages of notes and so on. So you want to keep a copy of your midterm one notes, but I'd like to see them because it'll help me understand what students think the course is about. Yeah. Sorry? What if you don't bring notes? Uh, that's fine. Yeah. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. No. Uh, anything that fits, the question was, is there anything you can put in the notes that's unacceptable? Uh, I can't imagine what it would be. Yeah. Sorry, it's closed book. Oh, when I said, yeah, the bring a book to read is after you've turned in your exam, and you know, don't bring the textbook. Bring, you know, <laughs> bring the Cider House Rules by John Irving, or something like that. Um, anything else? Okay, great. Um, question zero: Your name, your login, your TA's name, your section number. If you don't know your TA's name or section number, uh, now would be a good time to find out by going to section and asking. Um, arrange where you're going to meet your group. You know, we're going to sit in this corner of the room or that corner of the room or whatever it is. Um, if you're someone who always asks a lot of questions in exams, sit near the aisles. Try not to do that, though. Okay, words and sentences versus lists. So here's this picture that talks about um, what's what. And the purpose of it is to make the point that uh, the domains of these functions, neither one is a subset of the other. So word, sentence, first, but first, et cetera, work on words. Kans, car, kutter, and so on. Don't work on words. You can't say car of, quote, hello, and get H. It has to be first. On the other hand, word, sentence, first, but first, et cetera, doesn't work on any kinds of lists other than lists of words, which is the same thing as sentences. Okay? So there's this intersection of lists of words where both kinds of procedures will give you the answer you want. Now. When you're in that intersection, you want to follow whatever data abstraction has been given you. So um, if a problem says, uh, one of the arguments to the function you're writing is a list of sentences, you're going to want to use car and cutter to take apart that list of sentences, but you're going to want to use first and but first to look at the individual words in the sentence. Okay, because we didn't say a list of lists of words, we said a list of sentences, right? So that, that's just an example of respecting data abstraction, the same as 
you know, you use numerator and denominator for fractions instead of Karn Kutter. Um, okay, higher order functions for lists. That's the, uh, the only really new material uh, that I haven't taught you. Um, in lab and or homework and or lecture, uh, you've seen every keep and accumulate. Um, every computes a function of each element of a word or sentence, each letter or each word, and puts them together into a word or sentence. Keep takes a word or sentence and returns a subset, either a smaller word or a smaller sentence, that um, for which some predicate that you give it returns true. So it selects a subset. And accumulate um, takes a combiner function that takes two things and puts them together. And so accumulate kind of works on both because the combiner that you use can be appropriate for words and sentences or it can be appropriate for lists. Um, so there's really only one of those that you have to worry about. But every and keep, there are list equivalents called map and filter. Um, so Oops. Okay, so here's a case of a list of sentences where I use map on the list of sentences, but the selector function I used took one sentence, like John Lennon, and returned first of it. So I got back a word. Um, so that's just an example of using map, and I think it's obvious how the rest of this goes. Um, if you're dealing with lists of lists, map might give you a list of lists as results where you really just wanted individual words, a, a list that you wanted a sentence as the answer. Um, and in that case, uh, you might want to accumulate with append uh, or just apply append to the result to flatten it. I think the book talks about flattening a list of lists. Um, we did so much last time that I don't have enough new to say this time. Pretty amazing. Um, what do we do? Sorry, I'm a little disorganized today. Just sequences and calculator. All right, that'll be Friday. Okay, uh, let me talk actually about the thing at the top of the screen here, um, which is again about the difference between lists and sentences. So the first thing up there is a procedure to reverse the order of the words in a sentence. And the crucial part is that we say sentence, reverse all but the first word, and then put the first word at the end of that. Okay, and this works to reverse a sentence. Um, but if you try to reverse a list by doing the same thing, only cons instead of sentence, and coulder instead of but first, and car instead of first, it doesn't work. So let me show you it not working. Huh. 
Huh, you don't say. Oops. Okay, so now if I say reverse, this is the cons version we're looking at. I get this wrong answer. And maybe you did that in the lab. Maybe you've already seen something that looks like this. Uh, and it's what you get when you call cons with something other than a list as the second argument. Um, so cons is very good for sticking a new element at the front of a list, but it doesn't work for sticking a new element at the end of the list. So that's an asymmetry in lists that has to do with the fact that in each pair of the spine of a list, the car is an element and the cutter isn't an element. It's a sublist. It's part of the list, not a spine pair. Um, and so this is what you get if you put the elements in the cutters, which is what this program tries to do. Um, so in order to write a real reverse, um, well, there are a bunch of ways you could do it. Probably the most straightforward way uh, would be this. Did you do this in lab this week? Yeah, I think so. Oops. So it's the same up to this point. Now I'm going to say append. Oops, seek, it's called. Whoa, try that again. Um, I don't know why that happened, actually. But yeah, um, the reverse of, oh, I see, right here. There we go. So in order to make this work, I used a pen and also Here's one of the times where it's actually a little bit useful to use list. I called list with a single word as its argument. So this says make a list of length one containing this thing. And that's because what append is going to do is take the elements of reverse of the cutter and combine them with the element of this one element list I just made to make a new list. So the append, the arguments have to be lists, and the result is a list of the elements of the arguments. So that's, um, that's the way that we would do reverse, or a way, anyway, that we could do reverse. There are other ways. Um, it turns out, for example, by the way, that reverse is one of the few things that gets easier to read if you write it iteratively rather than recursively. So to generate an iterative process with a tail call and an extra argument to a helper function, just like I did last week. So if you're interested, you can pursue um, writing an iterative reverse. <coughs> OK. Um, hmm. This is great. Nothing to say.
Oh, yeah. I do have something to say, I guess. So unlike every, uh, the output from map can be itself a list of lists. So map itself does not do any flattening of its result. It just takes, it conses whatever your function is of car of the list with a recursive call to map for the cutter of the list. Okay. So that's a little bit different from every that flattens things out for you into a sentence. Um, yes? Okay, the question is, in the file I loaded, there are two things called reverse. So how do I know which one I got? The answer is I got the second one. The same as if you find a bug in some program you wrote, and so you type in a new version, the new version replaces the old version. Right? So it's the same thing. It defined the first reverse, and then it said, okay, here's a different definition for reverse, and now that's the new one. Okay? I mean, ordinarily, you wouldn't do this. And I don't want you to learn this as a programming technique. Right? Um, <laughs> it's just a lecturing technique. Sorry? Yeah, I used the last one. But guys, don't focus your attention on what does Scheme do in stupid, complicated edge cases that you shouldn't allow to happen. Right? I mean, basically, if you have two definitions for the same thing in the same file, it's because you're confused. And it almost doesn't matter what Scheme does because it's unlikely to be what you meant. Okay? So just don't let it happen. Yes? Could you rewrite a pen? Yes, absolutely. Using cons, car and cutter. Of course you could, yeah. But I'm not sure I understand the question. Um, are you saying you want to write? You want to change the meaning of append? I think actually there's a definition for append using cons. Get used to calling it cons in the book. Um, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry, say it again. Ah, okay. The question is, um, in the map example that's right here on the screen, if my list of lists includes just a word, what would happen? Um, well, we can do that. Um, What?
I hate computers. <laughs> I really do. In this silly terminal program, I have to type control shift copy to copy something. Anyway, here's what happens. Um, it applies but first to the word and it gets elp. So the general answer is it depends on the function that you use as the first argument to map. So every element of the list that you give as the second argument must be in the domain of the first function. And of that, yeah, first argument. So in this case, the first argument was but first, and its domain is words and sentences. So I can have a list of words and sentences. If I used um, plus, well, no. Square root. Map square root over a list. It had better be a list of numbers and nothing else. Okay? If I say map car, it had better be a list of lists because it's going to try to take care of all of them. Okay? So it's up to the, that function. Are they, was there a hand up here? No. Oh, yes. Right. The question is, in the example without help, where I have a list of sentences, why do I choose to see it as a list of sentences rather than just as a list of lists and use cutter? Say map cutter over those things. I could do that. It really depends on the context. So if somebody asks you to write a program, they're going to specify the data structures that you're working with. So um, I could say, you're given a list of rational numbers and you'd like to know the greatest common denominator. So as the first step of that, you're going to find all the denominators. And you would do that not by saying map cutter over the list of, of fractions, but map denominator in order to be following the abstraction, even though cutter would do the same thing and it would work. Okay, so you just you know, if you're designing the data structure, then you get to choose. But you should be consistent. You shouldn't sometimes use cutter and other times use but first on the same structure. Okay? That's just a, you know, style point. Okay, any other questions before I move on to the next exciting topic? It's a hand, yes. Thank you. If you replace map with every, well, let's try it and see. Technically, it's uh, illegal because the domain of every is words and sentences and not lists of sentences. But it might work. Let's see what happens. That's what happens. So every um, didn't complain. It applied but first to each element of the list. But instead of using cons as the combiner, it uses sentence as the combiner. So it has a flattening effect. So yeah, you might want to do that. Um, that's a situation where you're really going to feel torn. You're going to say, boy, every would do just what I want. But I know that it's a data abstraction violation to call every on a list of lists. So what am I going to do? And the right answer is you're going to say, apply append So we call map, the result is a list of lists, which isn't what you want, and you call append. So apply is a function that takes a function and a list of arguments and calls that function with all those arguments. So it's like appending all the pieces of the list of lists that map gave you. So this is the 
uh, data abstraction respectful way to do it instead of using every. Right? Yeah. Why do you have to say apply append? Because the result from map is one list of lists. If you apply a pen to one argument, it doesn't do anything. Okay? You want to call a pen with the first argument being loves you and the second argument being want to tell you and so on. So you want to call a pen with three arguments. And that's what apply does. It takes this list of arguments and calls the function with those things as arguments. Okay? Yes? Can you append something with an empty list? Sure, but it doesn't gonna, it's not going to help you any. Can you append, if you append whatever you get from map with the empty list, you will get back whatever you get from map, the list of lists. Because it takes the elements of the list of lists, which are lists, and makes a list out of those elements. So appending with the empty list doesn't help. Um, a lot of these things, by the way, you should be playing with stuff like this. Just, you know, every once in a while, fire up Scheme and ask yourself questions like this. I wonder what happens if I try such and such and see. So, you know, one of the nice things about studying computer science as opposed to maybe math is that often you don't have to ask the teacher whether you got the right answer. You can just ask the computer. So that helps. Yes? How would you write reverse just using cons and not using append or list? Um, well, one way is I could write a helper function that's basically append. Um, and the other way is uh, I can write an iterative process known as tail recursive procedure. It would be a helper function that takes two arguments which are lists, and we call them in and out. And in each recursive tail call, it transfers one element from in to out. And if you think about how that works, uh, you end up with the elements in reverse order. When in is empty, out is the thing you want. So that's why reverse is one of the few uh, problems that's a good candidate for using an iterative method. because doing iterations just sort of naturally reverses things. So often you'll try to do something iteratively and it'll come out backwards of what you meant. But in reverse, that is a benefit. Um, okay, so you can do that. It's a fun exercise. Okay, now for something completely different, since we have time. This is Hearst Avenue. This is Soda Hall. And then there's a little air gap here, but there isn't down here. So right here is a door. Why am I telling you this? You're in the 61A lab on the second floor. You're hungry. Time for lunch. So you come over here. You take the elevator up to the third floor. And you walk down the hill to lunch. That's silly. Stay on the second floor, go all the way to the end of the corridor, go through the doors that you see, and welcome to Etcheverry Hall, where there's an exit right here that you can just go straight to lunch from. <laughs> and similarly, when you come back from lunch, you can come in this way, not from dinner. Dinner, you have to go up to three. 
Um, so, so you know they have they have cameras near all the elevators. You may have noticed up like security cameras, and you all think that's um, to avoid theft and stuff. But really, it's how we tell who's smart enough to be a CS major. <laughs> People who go up to the third floor in the elevator and then walk back downhill doesn't do it. <coughs> okay. Any questions? <laughs> All right. We're going to end early today. See you Friday. <laughs>